welcome to this program. Today we are going to talk and discuss about important features and life cycle of mucor. The objectives of this study are to acquaint students with taxonomic description of mucor, structure of mycelium of mucor, its growth pattern and genetic makeup, reproduction in mucor both asexual and sexual, life cycle of mucor, economic importance of mucor. Mucor, also called as black mold or pin mold, belongs to the subdivision Zygomycotina, class Zygomycetes, order Mucorales, and family Mucoraceae. The fungi included in Zygomycotina are mostly terrestrial and reproduce asexually by non-motile spores. Their thallus is usually mycelial, aseptate, and the cell wall contains chitin and chitosan. They are normally haploid. The principal characteristics that distinguishes class zygomycetes is the production of a thick-walled resting spore called zygospore. The order mucorales has by far the largest number of species and morphological diversity within the class zygomycetes. Mucoralian species have a well-developed mycelium that is generally aseptate. When septa are present, they lack pores with specialized plugs. Mucoraceae is one of the largest families of mucorales. The genera belonging to mucoraceae produce non-epophysate sporangia with either deliquescent or persistent walls. There is often a slight constriction of the sporangiophore immediately below the sporangium. Zygospores have opposed non-appendage suspensors. Mucor is a large genus with more than 60 species and in general has a cosmopolitan distribution. It can be isolated from almost any organic material that is in contact with air, so can be found in soil, decaying plant material, dung, air and even in certain cases as a parasite on other fungi. Most of the species are saprops on a variety of materials, including foodstuffs. Some are weak parasites of fruits and vegetables. The molecular phylogeny reveals that species of mucor do not form a monophyletic clad and considerable variation can be seen even within the species. The majority of species can be placed into one of three groups based on their morphology. These are the mucor hemalis group, which consists of a number of morphologically similar species. The other two groups are the mucor sericenoloids group, characterized by rather small species with reddish brown zygospores, and the mucor mucido group, characterized by the tall group species, which generally show optimal development at temperature, which is just below 20 degrees Celsius. Now, the structure. The thallus is eucarpic and mycelial. Colonies of this fungus are typically white to beige. Older colonies become gray to brown in color due to development of spores. These are very fast growing and on culture medium may grow to several centimeters in height. The hyphae are coarse, cenostic and richly branched with branches usually tapering to fine points. Septa may develop at later stages or to separate the older or injured parts. The mycelium growing on substratum can be distinguished into absorption hyphae which penetrate the substratum and absorb food and sporangiophores, the bulk of aerial hyphae. The species produce non-epophysate sporangia that have a wet or dry wall when mature. The suspensors are typically enlarged, equal and opposite. Cell walls are complex with chitin microfibrils and abundance of chitosane. The cytoplasmic contents contain polysaccharides, proteins, pyrimidines, magnesium and Calcium have also been detected. It was in mucor roxide that chitosomes were first time reported. 
the cytoplasm often shows rapid streaming. Nuclei are irregular in shape, which divide by constriction and not by mitosis and spindle formation. In anaerobic liquid cultures, especially in presence of carbon dioxide, its mycelium breaks down into small spherical and independent cells. This is called torula stage or torula condition. Growth pattern. Colonies of mucor grow rapidly at 25 to 30 degrees Celsius and quickly cover the surface of the agar in culture medium. Genetic constitution and nuclear behavior. Many of the proteins and genes of mucor have been sequenced, which include ribosomal proteins, genes involved in isoprenide biosynthesis, iso A gene, iso B gene, gene encoding, glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate, dehydrogenase, LEV1 gene, etc. Now, reproduction. The fungus reproduces both asexually and sexually. Number one, asexual reproduction. Fragmentation, chlamydospores and sporangiospores are the methods for asexual reproduction. Number one, fragmentation. Due to mechanical injury, the vegetative hyphae break up into smaller fragments and each fragment develops into a new mycelium. Number two, chlamydospores. These are formed under unfavorable conditions. In anaerobic conditions, tips of the hyphae become septate. Each segment secretes a thick wall and assumes a round shape. These are called chlamydospores. Number three, spores or sporangiospores. This is the most common method of asexual reproduction. The sporangia develop terminally on hyphal branches known as sporangiophores. During the process of sporogenesis, apex of the sporangiospore swells and cytoplasmic mass along with nuclei move in this part. The swollen part enlarges into a large globose structure. This is the young sporangium. On maturity, contents of sporangium become differentiated into a thick, dense layer of cytoplasm with many nuclei towards the distal region beneath the sporangial wall and a vacuolated subglobose and nuclei free portion towards the center. An extension of that sporangiophore called columella protrudes into the sporangium. A dome-shaped septum is then laid down cutting off a distal peripheral portion from a central cylindrical or subglobose spore free core, the columella. The contents of the distal portion become cleaved into multinucleate spores. However, spores are uninucleate in certain species such as mucor hemalis. All the spores are almost of the same size, but in mucor proliferous, the spores formed in the terminal. Sporangia are larger than those produced in the lateral sporangia. When the sporangia are mature, the sporangio force may be seen as coarser, blunt-tipped aerial hyphae growing away from the substratum. The sporangial wall dissolves except for basal region where its remnants can be seen as a frill or collar at the base of the columella. The spores remain adhered to columella and are not easily disseminated. Usually mites bring about dissemination. In contrast to mucor in rhizopa, spores are very easily blown away by wind. Columella after dehiscence of sporangium does not change shape in mucor, while columella in most of the species of rhizopus become more or less dome or umbrella shaped after dehiscence of sporangium. In mucor plembilis, the sporangial wall breaks into pieces. The wall of mature sporangiospore consists of an inner electron transparent layer and outer electron dense layer. The spore wall is covered with two thin layers, each about 10 nanometer thick, which may correspond to ordinary spore sheet. The cell membrane of the spores do not have invaginations like those of higher fungi. 
Instead, there are numerous round depressions about 50 nanometers in diameter. Mitochondria of the spores are much larger and show wide and deep invaginations of their membranes. Their cristae are indistinct. Lipid droplets have multi-layered shells and are much more highly developed than those found in mycelial cells, torula stage or chlamydospores of this fungus. When they fall on suitable substratum in presence of proper moisture and temperature, they germinate by producing germ tubes which then establish new mycelia. Now, Sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction in mucor is of isogamous type, that is, the two mating gametes are morphologically identical. Species are homothallic, but most of the species are heterothallic. The conjugation of two gamete tangia gives rise to a zygospore. In heterothallic species, zygospores are formed only when gametangia of compatible strains contact each other. In the heterothallic species, the sexual act is initiated when hyphal branches of plus and minus strains contact each other. Initiation of gametangia is believed to be induced by the trisporic acids. They are produced in appreciable amounts only when plus and minus cultures are in continuous diffusion contact with each other. In homothallic species, zygophores of the same thallus can fuse to form a zygosporangium. Each branch swells at the tip to develop a progametangium. Dense cytoplasm and numerous nuclei flow to the contacting tips which enlarge further. A septum then separates the terminal part called gametangium from the remaining part of the progametangium, the suspensor. When the compatible and mature gametangia contact one another, their tips swell and fuse apically to form a fusion septum. The fusion septum dissolves and the protoplasm of both mix with each other. The structure formed by the fusion of two gametangia enlarges, develops a thick wall and is called as zygosporangium. The plasmogamy is followed by nuclear fusion, karyogamy of the two compatible strains to give numerous diploid nuclei. Secondary wall material is deposited causing the zygosporangium wall to thicken and become pigmented. Localized thickening results in the formation of the ornamentation characteristics of each species. The mature zygosporangium is more or less globose. The plasmogamy and karyogamy within the zygosporangium gives rise to a resting spore called zygospore. However, in certain conditions, zygospores may also be formed parthenogenetically and are called a zygospore. The zygospore is hyaline and characteristically with a single eccentric globule and many diploid nuclei. During germination, the outer wall cracks and the inner wall comes out in the form of germ sporangiophore. All the nuclei in the zygospore migrate to the tip of the germ sporangiophore. Consequently, it swells to form a sporangium called germ zygosporangium. Rarely more than one germ sporangiophores arise from a single zygospore. However, occasionally the germ sporangiophores may be branched and in such cases more than one sporangia are present on each germ sporangiophore, each of which bears a single terminal germ sporangium containing many spores. Life cycle in asexual phase, muca reproduces either by means of vegetative propagation or by means of spores. Many a times due to mechanical injury, the vegetative hyphae may break into smaller fragments and each fragment regenerates to form a new mycelium. Additionally, under unfavorable conditions, the tips of hyphae become septate. Each septate region secretes a thick wall around itself to form a chlamydospore. On the arrival of favorable conditions, each such spore germinates to form a new mycelium. However, the most common method of asexual reproduction is by sporangiospores. 
In sexual phase, muca reproduces by means of isogamy and the most of species are heterothallic. The compatible gametophores contact with each other and their distal segments fuse to form zygosporangium. The plasmogamy is followed by karyogamy and a brief transitory diploid stage is established. Before the germination, diploid nuclei formed in the zygospore undergo meiosis. Thus, haploid stage is reverted back. All the nuclei in the zygospore migrate to the tip of the germinated zygosporangium. The contents of the zygosporangium differentiate into spores, which in turn germinate to establish a new haploid mycelium. Thus, the life cycle of mucor is haplontic. Dimorphic mucor species are capable of growth as either accepted filamentous mycelial form or as yeast-like form. The gaseous atmosphere constitutes a pivotal factor in determining the type of the form. The hyphal form predominates when conditions are aerobic, whereas strict anaerobic condition is required for the development and maintenance of the yeast-like form. Now, economic importance. The genus mucor is of considerable economic importance. Many species of mucor are used in industrial fermentation at the initial stages for converting starch into sugar. Mucor circinaloids is proving to be a promising cost-effective biofuel. Mucor circinaloids produces an extracellular enzyme polygalacturonase which can be of tremendous economic importance. Most of the species are unable to infect humans. Most human infections reported list mucor circinaloids and similar species such as mucor indicus, mucor ramosissimus and mucor amphibiorum as the causative agents. Mucor species are mostly known as spoilage organisms and only one species has been reported as a pathogen on stone and palm fruit. Mucor rot is a post-harvest disease of apples, pears and other fruits caused by the fungus. Mucor pyriformis and less often by other mucor species. This is all we have for you in today's program. With this we conclude our today's topic about mucor. Goodbye.